Good day and welcome to the sermon for the first Sunday in Advent in the year of our Lord 2020. Just before I begin today, a word or two of brief reminder of announcements uh, would reiterate and reaffirm the announcement of the other week about flowers and the flower fund. If you'd like to make flowers a donation on any Sunday, please feel free to do so. You can contact either myself or our flower lady, Maria Matthews. Also, I intend to do flower memorials this coming Christmas time and to publish the list that would usually be the bulletin insert with the weekly email publication. Also, I would note that, uh, as mentioned uh, last week as well, uh, service time on Sunday changes as of today, the first Sunday in Advent. Instead of being at 9 a.m., it becomes 10 a.m. Enough by way of announcements. On the first Sunday in Advent, let us pray. This beautiful prayer, uh, which is uh, appointed for the entire season of Advent, Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light, now in the time of his mortal life, in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, now and ever. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The season of Advent commences today, and I could say to you, Happy New Year, because with the first Sunday in Advent, which is always the Sunday closest to the Feast of St. Andrew on the 30th of November, either before or after, the new church year begins. So for Christians, the, church, the new year doesn't begin uh, entirely on January the 1st, but the new church year begins on the first Sunday in Advent, and that is today. Happy New Year. And with the season of Advent and a brand new church year, the entire emphasis and focus of our devotions and of our scripture reading and of our prayers alters. There's a refocusing. The Trinity season, which began way back after Pentecost, all those months ago, back in June, uh, the theme of that was love of God, God's love for us and our love in return. And during that season, we sought to increase in our love for God and for one another. And we tackled some of the challenges and the obstacles, uh, both internal and external, when it comes to being able to love God and love one another better. Now, with the season of Advent, things change entirely. The focus goes on our Lord in a new and particular way. The season of Advent, of course, is named uh, from the Latin word advent, advenio, uh, advent and advenio, which means to come. And during the season of Advent, we focus on the two comings of our Lord. The first coming is the lowly babe, the son of Mary, in the manger in Bethlehem. And the second coming is the Lord in power and might and glory at the end of human history to be the judge of the living and the dead. Those are the two advents of our Lord that we think about during the season of Advent. And it's very important to understand that the purpose of the church year at this phase is to hold these two comings, which are so different and seem almost contradictory, uh, but aren't, to hold these two comings of our Lord in a uh, tension, the one with the other, a constructive and an educational tension, these two comings of our Lord kept in our minds and kept in our hearts during the season of Advent. And so that's what the Bible readings do. And uh, we see, uh, as well as these two comings of our Lord held in tension, there are all sorts of subcomings of our Lord within the season that I'll speak about as the Sundays go by. But also, as well as uh, the two comings of our Lord, there are other themes which come through as sub-themes. And one of those is, of course, this, the theme of expectation and of uh, nearness, of approach, of something great great and grand. And we see that reflected very nicely in today's uh, epistle from Romans chapter 13. Owe no man anything but to love one another, 
you know, people thinking about spending their money on Christmas and worried about their visa bills in January. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. We see the theme of Trinity season being brought in and connected here. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there is any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Beautiful. Love works no ill towards our neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The sense of expectation of something grand about to happen. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. A wonderful conclusion here to this epistle. And notice, too, this notion of light and darkness, another sub-theme or setting of the season of Advent. Season of Advent, of course, occurs as the approach of the winter solstice on the 21st of December, the shortest daylight hours of the entire year. And the church has geared its season to coincide with that. And so the theme of uh, uh, encroaching darkness but nonetheless with the assurance and the knowledge of light will in the end triumph. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness overcomes it not, part of the Christmas gospel. And so here we have the notion of light versus darkness, and darkness of course encroaching, but here in the epistle the darkness has to, not to do with the uh, lack of daylight, but it has to do with sin. Sin is the, the manifestation, if you like, of darkness, or rather more technically, the absence of light in our hearts and in our lives. So let us walk honestly as in the day, and not doing these things, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, the life and the light of God, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. And so this beautiful epistle we have here at the beginning of the season of Advent, bringing up the themes of uh, darkness and being conquered by light, bringing up this sense of hope and expectation. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Those are sub-themes within the overarching theme of the two comings of our Lord. And then we have today the beauty on the first Sunday in Advent, the Gospel. And the Gospel from St. Matthew chapter 21 would be seen by some as being inappropriately placed because it is the story of our Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Whoa, what's going on? Someone made a mistake. That's supposed to be saved for Palm Sunday. What's it doing here on the first Sunday in Advent? But there is no mistake here whatsoever. This Gospel fits perfectly with Advent. And so, it takes a particular understanding of this gospel for it to fit, not a manipulation of it, but a deeper and spiritual understanding. So, we all know the story. Our Lord is approaching Jerusalem. Uh, the, uh, he rides in a donkey. He enters into the holy city. They tear the branches off the palm trees. They strew his way with those branches and with their outer coats. And our Lord triumphantly en enters into the city of Jerusalem. Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, your king comes unto you, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of the ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put them uh, their clothes on him, and set Jesus thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees, and strawed them in the way. And the multitude that went before, and that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! Expectation, 
and excitement at the arrival of our Lord, at the coming of our Lord, at the advent of our Lord. And when Jesus was come into Jerusalem, all the city was astir, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth from Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house should be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. A beautiful gospel for the first Sunday in Advent. What in the world is it about? Well, obviously, it is about uh, not turning uh, the temple of God into a shopping mall. It's about not wasting our money on material things, not spending as if we can purchase love and happiness at Christmas season, but it's about something much more profound than that. Our Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem was met with hope and expectation. And as he entered in, he went straight to the heart of the matter. He went to the temple. And there in the temple, he found things which were not appropriate. He found commercial interests. He found buying and selling. And if we understand the temple to be a microcosm or representative of our hearts, our lives, and our souls, then bang, the light comes on, and we see the application of this gospel. Not some twisted interpretation, but the actual spiritual interpretation of the behavior of our Lord to our own souls and our own lives now. What does our Lord find when he comes to our hearts, the temple of our hearts where the Holy Spirit abides? And Jesus went into the temple and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house should be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. What does our Lord find when he comes to us? Yes, indeed, it is true. We need to work. We have bills to pay. There are financial matters which need to be considered. Absolutely. But do those intrude on the very core of our being? Do, do our worries and anxieties about finances actually infest and alter and twist the very nature of who we are as individuals. If they do, then we have a problem. Then they've entered into a realm which is supposed to be reserved for higher things, more important things, and yes, indeed, spiritual things, the temple of our heart. And there our Lord comes in this Advent season to assist us and to purge us of the intrusion of things which don't belong in the very core of our being. It is supposed to be a place of quiet, our soul, a place where we encounter our God, a place where we read the scriptures and inwardly digest them. It is to be a place of prayer and quiet. But if there are these other things intruding there, these other worries and anxieties, these intrusions of the commercial, these intrusions of the material, then we have a problem and then we need to consult and ask our Lord to help us to put these things out of that part of the very core of our beings, our souls. And so in this Advent season, part of what we need to do is to look inward, to examine the very core of our beings, our souls, and see what it is we see there, see what it is our Lord sees there very easily, and ask his assistance to perhaps purge and put some things out so that other better, higher things can enter so that time can be spent in reading and reflection upon Scripture and the themes I would suggest of this season of Advent so that time can be spent there at the core of our being quietly in prayer and worship directed not towards the worries and concerns of life, not towards concerns of finances, not towards concerns about buying of presents, but towards our God. And read again the words of today's epistle. Uh, love is the fulfilling of the law, knowing that now, now, 
It is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The coming of our Lord as the babe in the manger, the coming of our Lord as the judge of the living and the dead, is nearer than it was before. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore cast off these works of darkness and put on the armor of light the things of our faith. That is our call, that is our challenge, that is our opportunity this holy season of Advent, which we begin today on this first Sunday in Advent in the year of our Lord 2020. My prayer is that we may all seek indeed and endeavor to have holy Advents this year during these trying times. God bless you and be with you. Amen.